Manga is outselling American comics by quite a bit. Why is this happening? And why do so many people have a problem with it? I don't know. Let's talk about it. Hey, what's up, nerd fam? It's your boy, Gershaw. I'm going to welcome you to Enter the Nerd. All right. So, recently, or, yeah, maybe the past couple of years, like, manga has really been kicking American comics ass. And a lot of people just are getting more and more, not just the manga, but even anime, right? Instead of just picking up an American comic book. And there are a couple of reasons here that I think we should really talk about before we get to, like, the sociopolitical stuff, which, is like, which a lot of people are going to get into, which I've heard, especially in some of these groups. I've seen some of these, like, comic books on Facebook, and they talk about it a lot. Um, and we'll get into that later. But there are some very practical reasons as to why people are just... It's easier to get into manga than it is American comics. First off, for manga, I believe, when it comes to... Okay, I'm going to say this. I'm not, like, a huge uh, manga reader. Like, I've, I've gotten to some of the really popular ones, like Full Metal Alchemist and stuff like that. Um, even read some of the original Dragon Ball stuff, uh, parts of Berserk, but like my friend Hennef, like he's much better when it comes to like manga stuff. Like I like it. I'm, I'm more into like the more, uh, motion visuals, like when it comes to like, um, watching the anime and stuff like that. I'm, I'm much more of a fan of that, but, um, I'm just letting you know, so, you know, I'm not, I'm passing myself off as like an, an, an expert on this, but I'm, I'm a bit more than casual. But I, I wouldn't say I'm a huge expert. Just trying to get you so you understand I'm not coming up as like a, you know, like a know-it-all here. But something to pay attention to um, when it comes to this is there is usually a central vision when it comes to like a series like Naruto or Bleach. And they, they know where they're going. So if I wanted a person to get into like Naruto or One Piece, I'd say, hey, just start at volume one and go forward, right? That's it. Same thing with the anime. Now, when it comes to American comics, it is a bit different because uh, some of these comics are much older and they're written by different authors that have different runs that have different interpretations of the same character. Now, while inherently that doesn't have to be bad, right? Because if you have, you know, 12 different people can 12, 12, uh, yeah, 12 different people can tell 12 different stories about the same character, that's not bad. The issue is when the editor in chief does not control the continuity of that and then, you know, where five people agree that this character can do A, B, and C, but then two people go, no, uh, he can also do D and E. D and, e. and then the other character, people go, well, um, E and B, no, but A and C. And the editor's like, wait, hold on. We have to keep this in line because if he can't do anything that, or he can't do this thing that he was doing before, we have to write why that's, why that is. We can't just make it seem like it never happened. And that happens, unfortunately, a lot, specifically within the big two with Marvel and DC and having so many different runs. And, you know, like, for example, like my favorite character, Spider-Man, you know, I have amazing, like, spectacular, you know, so many. And this is, most of the time, you'll see much more in common than there is different. I'll say that. But there are definitely some things that they, that are canon for a while, and then they'll write it out to be not canon if they don't like it. And then they'll do some type of big multiversal event to try and fix it, you know, DC, you know, all the different crises that happened because so much crap was done with the writing. That's an editing problem. That's something that, that a quality control problem that they have to pay attention to. But having a whole bunch of different people work on a character isn't bad because they can write different stories. They just have to be able to pay attention to the continuity that's there. And obviously, if manga doesn't have to deal with a whole bunch of those people, they just have a central vision, which means less to, um, less to have to worry about. But the reader's journey is obviously much easier on one than it is the other. That's just, it, it, it is what it is, right? Now, um, in terms of character design and stuff like that, what's really cool about American comics is that the costumes and all that have so many times to change because it can change with the times. So because they're such they're so long running, so many things can change. So many, like, they, when they have different powers and they have different stories, there are things that like these characters can truly, truly grow. That's something that does get taken for granted. And obviously, when it comes to American comics, like I'm usually the guy. Now, this is the thing that I have grown up with, not necessarily like like manga, but I have grown up reading. And I am usually the guy that has to tell people, hey, start here. Start here. Read this read, read from this character from here to here. And it's good because now we have resources like 
if you're reading Marvel and DC, and, or even like some of the independent stuff, you have comicsology for them, you have like DC Universe and Marvel Unlimited, and, you, and all that stuff is there for you to see. Um, yes, yeah, some of the comics can be hard to read because the language is different, it varies on time, but it's cool, and that's why American comics are like, I, I think they're just, they're, they're very high level literary works, especially when you see some people who are writing it. Some people don't believe it because they see people in tights and blasting things out of their eyes, but that's because they're not really giving it a chance. But I, 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 I digress with that. And I'm saying that, uh, but with, with manga, it's usually the characters over like their lifetime and their lifetime isn't over 40 years. Now, I'm sure there are some manga that have been going on for a really, really long time. And there are some anime that have been going on for a really long time. Like I think Conan is one of them. So I'm not, so it's not, I'm not speaking for every single one. I know there are some that are like super long running, but most of them are not. They have a very finite beginning and end, which is cool, which is great. And that's a really good thing. Like even like some of the, the mangas that are long running, their animes would be like 25 episodes and be abridged. And that's cool too. I think that's that, that that's cool as well too. Now, um, but obviously the reader's journey is easier. Like regardless of what I'm saying, the reader's journey is way easier on one, right? The, for for a manga, they can just pick it up, grab and go. Now, let's just say with all that, like you know, the person who wants to get to American comics has all the help, and there's no barrier to entry. What's happening right now, modern day, with American comics? And this is the socio-political part, right? Because now a lot of the comics are adhering or they're trying to get people who do not read the comics by injecting a lot of social and political messages. Now, I know that people are gonna go, it's always been social and political. You're right. They have also been, always been social and political messages. However, they did not beat you over the head with it and they understood how to tell a nuanced story where even if one side was supposed to be objectively wrong, they did write stories to get you to see how they could have got to that point, even if they happened to be the villain, i.e. X-Men and so many other stories. It's not just a person writing and saying this is, and just putting in like, imagine someone who has like a whole Twitter account who's like, I believe that this president, blah, blah, and then that guy gets a chance to write a comic and he writes a comic, which is almost like a visual like a visual image of his Twitter timeline. That's what's happening right now in the big two, at least. A lot in the big two in, in Marvel and DC, they're just trying to adhere to people who specifically really on on one side of the, the political spectrum, trying to adhere to them. And those guys, they don't really watch comics. I'm sorry, they don't read comics. They might watch some of the films and maybe some of the cartoons, but they don't go and buy the comics. Cause obviously a lot of people, readings at an all time low anyway, especially in the West, but they're, they, they're gonna go for the, the visual media, but it doesn't really translate. However, when you look in like for Japanese, obviously people are reading the manga cause it's, it's selling like crazy, especially even over here. And they're watching the shows and the movies they're coming out with. So they have crossover there because it's a, it's a linear message that anyone can understand. For example, I told you I'm a big comic book guy. I love My Hero Academia because I feel like that was a show made for me. Made for people like me who love superheroes and I love the whole training thing. I love the main character who obviously is developing and he's gonna become a beast later on, but it's slow and steady. I love that. I love like Jujutsu Kaisen. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm watching a bunch of stuff because obviously I had a big gap. Like I went from watching Outlaw Star, Trigun, Tenshi Muyo, stuff like that. And then having, and like, then being kind of weird on, on anime and then having to get back and watch all the stuff right now. But My Hero Academia, I, it, I, I believe that one is what rekindled a little flame of that for me because it was, it spoke to me as a person who loves like American superheroes. And that, I, I believe that's who they were aiming at. And they, they did it at a good time because obviously superhero movies and shows better are at all time high too. So I dig it. And obviously the manga is ahead and I've actually started reading that too. And like, I'm not a person who, always reads like the monkey show I'm like oh let me go get the do, uh, just do, do the anime right let me just go let me go get the guy I don't have to wait for scans or whatever you know what I mean because and then I have to wait for the whole volume right but whatever whatever I I'm just saying there is a clear reason as to why one is doing one is doing better than the other one of them is in a more practical sense and one of them is just the other one's just not bogged down by listening to people that don't even buy it and I listen to the main demographic that does buy it, as well as the Japanese leading with their culture. 
I believe there's a gentleman who, the guy who made Ultraman was talking about that, and how they have to use Japanese culture to like get themselves into the West and to make themselves successful. And they're right, it's all they really have to do. Whereas American comics, they, they almost, they don't know who they want to adhere to. And they're trying to please everyone, but then not really everyone. And then also, you know, making fun of a lot of the demographic that actually does criticize things that they do. Like, that's not good. Like, that's why a lot of the stuff is, is, is not selling. And you can tell, if you've ever gone to a, a comic book shop, especially in the early 90s, you understand there's, there's, like a, there's a, a big difference. There's a big difference. You see tons of stuff where manga is now in these old, in, uh, in these uh, new comic book shops. But let me know what you think. Um, do you do you see why the disparity between the two? Which one do you like reading? Tell me what your favorites are. Um, yeah, let's just have a discussion. Enter the nerd.